Thank you all for listening and watching my videos, please subscribe and like my channel Master Coolits. Hoping that you will not skip my ads, it's a big help for me by not skipping it, thank you so much. Dragon Shadow. The Rise. However, Zane wouldn't be caught dead blinded by greed. He could still keenly discern the current situation and its implications. Therefore, he swiftly transferred a small part of the treasure, roughly 9,000 worth of crystals, into his storage ring. As for the spirit cultivation ring, it remained securely in his hands for the time being. After Samuel Peterson, the formidable leader of the bandits, met his demise, the surrounding area descended into utter chaos. Now leaderless, the bandits immediately panicked and began to flee in all directions. Seeing this golden opportunity, the Harrier family soldiers eagerly chased after them. Zane's eyes blazed like fierce torches as a cold, menacing laugh escaped his lips. Without hesitation, he pounced on the heads of some of the fleeing bandits. Wielding the formidable Aurora sword skill with deadly precision, Zane instantly eliminated them one by one. He then swiftly took their storage rings away. Then he decisively dealt with the terrifying blood corpses, for those unfortunate souls who had degenerated into blood corpses, even with the magical drum destroyed in Samuel's death, the horrific result couldn't be reversed by any means. He could not know for certain if these individuals still retained any semblance of consciousness, but even if they did, they would surely never want to continue existing in such a nightmarish state. Without hesitation, he immediately threw out a few crackling thunder spears and blasted the blood corpses into countless pieces. After Zane had dealt with the blood corpses, the curtain finally fell on the surrounding chaotic battle. Corpses were strewn everywhere, and crimson rivers of blood flowed freely, painting a gruesome scene. While many of the people of the Harrier family were tragically killed or grievously injured in the intense conflict, the patriarch Noah Harrier and several other important figures miraculously emerged unharmed. Having witnessed the awe-inspiring scene when Zane fought with Samuel Peterson and the terrifying blood corpses, Noah was completely bowled over. Even though Zane was only at the fourth stage of the foundation level, his combat prowess and techniques were truly not to be underestimated. Immediately, it struck Noah that he should show proper social propriety to this powerful ally. He swiftly jumped off his horse and respectfully bowed in sincere thanks to Zane. Honorable gentlemen, I cannot begin to express how immensely grateful I am for your chivalrous and incredibly timely help in our dire situation. Without your intervention, we wouldn't have been able to avenge my fallen brothers we might have tragically fallen into a deadly ambush because of our rashness. After all, these fearless and utterly terrifying blood corpses alone were more than enough to defeat thousands of our best troops with ease. Noah felt nothing but endless, heartfelt gratitude towards Zane for saving them all. You give me too much credit, Mr. Harrier. It was truly no more than necessary self-defense on my part. If Samuel hadn't been foolish enough to recklessly attack me first, I might not have participated at all. Then again, I must admit that I did use quite a lot of effort to deal with Samuel and his blood corpses. And I unfortunately used up quite a few of my special arrows in the process. But please, don't trouble yourself about it. You really don't need to repay me for my actions. Zane cleverly pretended as if he was simply making light of his deed, downplaying his crucial role in their victory. Noah Harrier quickly grasped the situation and promptly ordered someone to gather the purplish gold arrows, returning them to Zane. You've expended considerable effort for our family. Should you require anything of us, please don't hesitate to ask. Zane's eyes darted back and forth, inwardly rejoicing. This was precisely the opening he had been anticipating. Might I be permitted to examine the exotic beast you've captured? I'm intrigued as to what could have driven this group of thieves to risk offending an entire family. Zane produced the spirit cultivation ring, waving it before the other man. Noah immediately gave his consent with a smile. This exotic beast senselessly took my brother's life. Even now that we've captured it, 
we're uncertain whether it will bring us fortune or misfortune. His fingers tapped the spirit cultivation ring, revealing a small formation. He swiftly drew a few strokes on the formation, instantly breaking it, and passed it to Zane. As Zane summoned the beast within, a fist-sized, three-tailed spirit fox materialized. It radiated an aura of spiritual energy. However, the moment it appeared, a gust of wind stirred beneath its paws. It suddenly slipped free, attempting to escape. Trying to flee, huh? Not so fast. Zane let out a cold snort and instantly employed the three-star step to catch up. He effortlessly recaptured it. As a precaution, he firmly grasped its three fluffy white tails. The fox emitted a piercing screech and bit his finger. Infernal creature! How dare you harm people! Noah's fury was palpable upon witnessing this. He moved to strike the spirit fox, but was halted by Zane. Wait, what is this dot dot dot? Hanging from the three-tailed spirit fox's neck was a bell bearing an engraved symbol. It tinkled softly. Zane's mind instantly went blank, thoughts ceasing. His entire body quivered with excitement. While others might remain oblivious, he recognized it well. Only his missing father, Ezekiel Martel, knew of this symbol. Could this spirit fox be connected to his father? Someone had once informed him that Ezekiel Martel was last seen near Burial Mountain. The fox had also been captured in that vicinity. Could Ezekiel Martel be there as well? Zane felt a growing hope that perhaps this small demonic beast could lead him to his father. A thousand thoughts raced through his mind in an instant. Zane took a deep breath, forcing himself to regain composure. Mr. Harrier, I have a matter to discuss. This little fox seems remarkably human-like, and we've formed an instant connection. If it's not too presumptuous, might you consider bestowing it upon me? Noah's expression immediately darkened, his brows furrowing deeply. Not only had capturing the three-tailed spirit fox cost significant manpower and resources, but it had also claimed his brother's life. He couldn't relinquish it that easily. However, Zane's formidable strength was now evident. If Noah refused, the entire Harrier family might perish should Zane choose to attack. He hesitated, caught in a dilemma. Finally, he spoke with a hint of sadness. A three-tailed spirit fox is exceedingly rare and valuable. Selling it to a noble would undoubtedly yield a substantial profit. Though you've done us a great service, the three-tailed spirit fox is far too precious, unless... Unless? Unless you agree to owe us a favor. Should I shatter my jade pendant one day in the foreseeable future, you'd be obligated to come to our aid. With this, he produced two identical jade pendants, offering one to Zane. Agreed. You have my word. Zane said as he accepted the jade pendant. Noah was visibly pleased. If true calamity befell the Harrier family, perhaps Zane might prove of little use. Yet he hadn't forgotten that Zane was a prodigy from the Five Spirit Sect. His future potential remained unknowable. If he grew powerful enough to reverse a dire situation, then relinquishing the three-tailed spirit fox was undoubtedly worthwhile. They conversed at length thereafter. The Harrier family needed to attend to the battlefield, so Zane took his leave. Once they were completely out of sight, Zane immediately leapt into the dragon prison. Within the prison, there was no concern about the spirit fox escaping. Zane simply released it, allowing it to bound freely. However, despite the dragon prison's vastness, the fox found no place to conceal itself. All around were scorching red and black rocks. The more the spirit fox attempted to flee, the more Zane pursued it. He pondered if it was reacting to the cyan sword energy. The fox, utterly terrified, hastily changed direction and continued its frantic escape. Fox fled in panic before Zane, darting erratically across the terrain. No matter where it ran, Zane's green sword energy pursued it relentlessly. Maintaining just the right distance, the sword energy avoided harming the fox's flesh. 
After what seemed an eternity of this chase, the fox, mentally and physically exhausted from its futile attempts to escape, simply collapsed to the ground and ceased its desperate struggle. Zane's lips curled into a satisfied grin. He gently grasped the fox and gazed intently into its vibrant pink eyes. He then addressed it in a clear, measured voice. I know you can understand me, so answer me truthfully now. What's the story behind this bell hanging from your neck? Who gave it to you? And most importantly, where is that person now? After this series of probing questions, the fox merely glared at him, refusing to give any indication that it comprehended his words. I should have known better than to expect a verbal response. Demonic beasts, no matter how intelligent, cannot speak our language. It seems I'll need to bring some writing implements for you. Just as he prepared, a dazzling white light suddenly enveloped the three-tailed spirit fox. The brilliant white light engulfed the small creature. Within its radiant embrace, the fox's body began to shift and change dramatically, taking on a distinctly humanoid form. To Zane's utter astonishment, a woman who appeared to be in her mid-twenties emerged gracefully from the fading light. As she moved with fluid, almost hypnotic motions, her shapely form swayed enticingly. Her lustrous silver hair cascaded down to her chest, rippling gently with each subtle movement. A fragrance reminiscent of cherry blossoms emanated from her presence, overwhelming Zane's senses momentarily. Her captivating almond-shaped eyes were wide and alert filled with an otherworldly intelligence. Atop her head stood a pair of fluffy, white pointed ears, twitching slightly as they caught every sound. Zane felt an inexplicable urge to grab them, though he resisted the temptation. This vision of unearthly beauty left Zane's mouth dry and his mind reeling. He stood utterly stunned, unable to tear his gaze away from the mesmerizing figure before him. Suddenly, as if doused with cold water, Zane snapped back to his senses. He quickly retreated several steps, clutching the dragon blood sword tightly in his trembling hands. Shock and disbelief were evident in his wide-eyed expression. You're from the demon clan. He frowned deeply, eyeing the woman who now exuded a killing intent. Zane's mind raced, recalling all he knew about these mythical beings. The demon clan differed greatly from ordinary demons or beasts. The latter were mere animals capable of cultivation, and unless one's cultivation level was extremely high, the transformation would prove nearly impossible for them. But the demon clan was unique and terrifyingly powerful. They possessed incomparable spiritual intelligence from birth. Some, like the being before him, could even assume perfect human form at will. Beyond their ability to inhabit human bodies, they retained their formidable, demonic talents and abilities. Their physical qualities could include superhuman strength that could shatter mountains or wings that allowed them to soar through the heavens. The spirit foxes of the demon clan were renowned for their unparalleled beauty and mastery of illusion and sorcery. Though Zane had never personally encountered a demon clan member before this moment, he had studied the ancient records extensively, committing their strengths and weaknesses to memory. He also knew, with a sinking feeling in his stomach, that each member of the demon clan harbored an insatiable bloodlust, particularly those who had developed a taste for slaying human warriors. Noting Zane's combat-ready stance, the lithe woman sneered softly, her voice like silk hiding steel. Oh my, you were so fierce and determined when chasing me earlier. Why the sudden shyness now? Or perhaps, you've lost interest in uncovering the mysteries of this little bell? Such a shame, when the answers you seek are right before you. As she spoke, she toyed idly with the small bell hanging from her slender neck, her delicate fingers caressing it in a way that drew Zane's gaze. However, Zane fought to remain vigilant. He knew all too well that the spirit foxes of the demon clan excelled at deception and manipulation. One moment of carelessness could cost him not just the information he sought, but his very life. Then why don't you reveal the secret of this bell? Stop playing games and speak plainly. Come closer, brave warrior. I'll whisper the secrets you seek if you dare to approach. 
With her mesmerizing charm, she beckoned to Zane. The allure of her gesture caused his blood to rush, a warmth spreading through his body. If not for his iron will and months of mental training, he might have succumbed to her bewitching presence. This display alone proved the formidable and dangerous nature of spirit foxes. Zane's brow furrowed in concentration as he made a swift decision, setting aside his usual chivalry toward women. His fingers moved with practiced precision, dancing through the air as he conjured forth his power. A sharp, emerald-hued sword energy materialized, slicing through the atmosphere with a menacing hum. The manifestation of his power grew rapidly, transforming from a thin, barely visible beam into a massive, pulsating force. It was brimming with lethal intent. The fox's composure finally faltered as she realized the gravity of her situation. A cry of genuine fear escaped her lips. Wait, stop this madness. Are you truly attempting to end my life? If you do, you'll never uncover the bell's origin or its connection to you. Zane hesitated for a moment before swiftly dissipating the sword energy. He fixed her with a stern gaze and snorted derisively. Hmm. <laughs> then cease your childish games this instant. Tell me truthfully, who gave this bell to you? What connection does it have to Ezekiel Martel? All right, all right. I'll explain everything. There's no need for such aggression. But first, I have a question. What exactly is your relationship with this Ezekiel Martel you've mentioned? That's not your concern. Focus on answering my questions. If you insist on keeping your secrets, then I shall do the same. I'll remain silent even if you kill me. With a huff of indignation, she crossed her arms tightly over her chest and turned away. She squeezed her eyes shut and frowned. Suddenly, without warning, a bolt of lightning-fast sword energy materialized and slashed toward her neck. It stopped mere inches from severing her head. Yet to Zane's surprise, the spirit fox remained eerily calm, as if she had already accepted the possibility of death. Seeing his threat prove ineffective against her resolve, Zane found himself at an impasse. Reluctantly, he decided to reveal a fragment of information, hoping it would be enough to loosen her tongue. Ezekiel Martel is my father. What? Is Ezekiel Martel truly your father? No, that's preposterous. Such a claim is too convenient. How can you possibly prove it? I cannot offer you concrete proof at this moment. I can only say that the symbol etched upon that bell is known solely to my father and me. Then, if what you claim is true, you must know the meaning behind this symbol. I do. It represents my name, Zane.
terrifying, murderous aura began to emanate from his very being, growing stronger with each passing second. The oppressive pressure of his unleashed emotions was so intense that it seemed to condense the very air around them, making it difficult to breathe. Billy, startled by the sudden and dramatic shift in Zane's demeanor, quickly attempted to calm him, recognizing the danger of his unchecked emotions. Please try to compose yourself. I understand the turmoil you must be feeling. Truly, I do. Know that I escaped from our homeland with the sole purpose of gathering reinforcements, hoping to save my benefactor and what remains of my people. It was only due to my narrow escape and the toll it took on my cultivation that I ended up in this weakened state, vulnerable to capture. But I implore you to listen carefully. Even if you were to storm their stronghold now, filled with righteous anger, your current strength would only lead to your swift and certain demise. You must not act rashly. Consider this. Even your father, my savior, whom I regard as the most talented and formidable individual I've ever had the privilege of knowing, could only be imprisoned by our enemies. What chance would you have against such overwhelming odds? You are the son of my benefactor, and for that alone, I feel a duty to protect you. I empathize deeply with your pain and your desire for action, but I cannot, in good conscience, allow you to involve yourself in this perilous situation. Not yet, not like this. We must be smart and we must plan if we hope to succeed. Zane bowed his head and clenched his fist tightly, his entire body visibly trembling. Must I truly stand idle while my father suffers, despite knowing that I could do something, anything? Should I really choose inaction instead? I can't possibly bear to see my beloved father suffer while I remain here living comfortably. No, that's simply not going to happen. Two resolute beams of light shone from Zane's eyes, fierce determination solidifying in his heart like never before. Whatever it takes, no matter the cost, I have to find a way to save my father. Tell me who did this, Billy. I must know. Seeing the stubborn, unyielding expression on Zane's face, Billy felt a sharp twinge of pain in her heart. But when she thought of just how incredibly powerful the enemy truly was, she immediately suppressed the urge to tell him the whole truth. No. No matter how powerful you might think you are, it's completely out of the question. The enemy's talent and strength? If you are talking about talent and strength... With a cold, stern face, Zane pointed skyward decisively. Her curiosity thoroughly piqued. Billy's eyes followed Zane's hand and looked up into the sky above them. Suddenly, Billy's face changed drastically, her pupils shrinking to pinpoints, and an extremely frightened expression burst out across her features. She seemed to be completely crushed by some primordial, natural enemy. It was a kind of suppression that came from the very depths of her blood. She could only feel her insides collapsing and trembling uncontrollably. She found she could not breathe at all, and she did not even have the strength to flick any of her ten fingers. Ah! Dragon! It's a freaking dragon! How? How could you possibly have... It was as if she had seen something truly extraordinary and terrifying. Billy hunched over and did not dare to stare up anymore. She even hid behind Zane like a frightened tortoise. Now... Do I have the right to know the full truth? If you really have the dragon bone, perhaps it might actually work. Her wide pink eyes stared at Zane, filled with both surprise and a glimmer of delighted hope. I'll tell you, but, but not right now. With your current strength, you will certainly die if you go there. If you can reach the intermediate level or the advanced level, we might have a chance. In the past, Zane had felt that the advanced level was completely unreachable. However, he had gradually come to understand that this might not be the case ever since he had entered the Five Spirits sect. In this vast, mysterious world, there was always a horizon that was more powerful, far beyond his imagination. Above the foundation level was the intermediate level. Then came the advanced level, followed by the formidable expert level. 
In the past, he had felt that the advanced level was unreachable, but now the situation was different. Especially after possessing the dragon prison, everything suddenly became possible. Father, wait for me. When I'm strong enough, I'll save you from the clutches of the enemy. No matter who they are, I will raise their palace to the ground and kill all those who dared to hurt you. Zane clenched his fist tightly, and his eyes burned with an unyielding fire. What he might have lacked in natural talent, he more than made up for with his fighting spirit and determination. Zane knew very well that with his current strength, he couldn't reach the Dark Reach Highlands. What's your plan for now? You know what? Why don't you stay here and help me for the time being? Billy nodded slowly. Since she had found Ezekiel Martel's son, there was no reason for her to leave now. If she stayed to assist Zane in his growth, she just might have a chance of returning to the Dark Reach Highlands in the future. Turning around gracefully, she once again transformed back into a furry fox, the size of a human arm, perching comfortably on Zane's shoulder. Zane then jumped out of the prison swiftly and rushed towards a nearby mountain range. On the way there, he divulged a few of the dragon prison secrets to Billy Chun. Think of it as a... Um, an incredibly large and versatile storage ring. Their next destination, the ominous Ghost King Mountain, boasted a kind of rare herbal medicine known as the Ghost King Flower. This magical flower bloomed with a special divine feminine energy, which was an essential element for practicing some particularly powerful cultivation methods. Therefore, there were often numerous tasks of obtaining the Ghost King flower plastered on the Mission Monument in the bustling Hall of Foreign Affairs. It was said that a long time ago, the Ghost King Mountain was just a very ordinary, unremarkable mountain range, but later a powerful master was killed on the mountain. The strong, lingering resentment of this master remained on the mountain all year round. With time, even the vitality around them gradually atrophied and withered away. Therefore, the Ghost King Mountain was perpetually filled with dark, ominous clouds all year round and was completely lifeless. But it was precisely owing to these unique conditions that it was hailed as the most fertile land for cultivating the highly sought after Ghost King flower. The following day, Zane and his companion arrived at the imposing Ghost King Mountain. The soil beneath their feet was dark and ominous and gloomy clouds perpetually gathered in the sky overhead. Even the sparse, sepulchral flowers and grass bore the pallor of death, as if they were gazing into an endless abyss. As he wandered and searched all around the eerie landscape, suddenly, without warning, a menacing black shadow pounced on him. Zane quivered and swiftly took a step back. The sword energy in his hand shot out with lightning speed. With one precise cut, two pieces fell apart. Blood kept oozing out steadily from the deep cuts on the two severed limbs. Upon taking a closer look, it turned out to be a formidable body-tempering level tiger. As the fresh, crimson blood seeped into the dark soil, there seemed to be something mysterious under it that was about to sprout. It was a strange, pitch-black flower unlike anything Zane had ever seen before. It's a Ghost King flower! Finally! Sucking in a deep, amazed breath, Zane immediately plucked the flowers in full bloom and carefully stashed them away. He had long heard that the appearance of the Ghost King flower in Ghost King Mountain was very special in that it must be sacrificed with potent blood. The more powerful the sacrificial offerings were, the greater the weight and potency of the blooming Ghost King flower would be. It's time to get to serious work. He rubbed his hands together in anticipation and plunged deeper into the dense, foreboding jungle. Half an hour later, a first stage foundation level firewolf met its demise at Zane's skilled hands. Another hour passed and Zane encountered a fearsome dark blood lion. The menacing creature unhinged its bloody mouth, revealing razor sharp fangs and directly lunged at him with murderous intent. By the time half a day had elapsed, Corpses were strewn everywhere across the once flat, grassy plain of Ghost King Mountain, and blood was flowing freely like a gruesome river. Those that had fallen were all first to third stage foundation level demonic beasts.
almost all of them had been swiftly and efficiently killed by Zane's relentless attacks. Suddenly, the surroundings were filled with eerie black flowers and a strange, intoxicating fragrance wafted through the air, traveling to their nostrils. Just as Zane was about to bend over and pick one of these mysterious blooms, the spirit fox suddenly cautioned him with urgency in her voice. Careful, master. It seems that someone is approaching. I know, I sense their presence as well. As soon as he finished speaking, a young man suddenly appeared near them, as if materializing out of thin air. His eyes lit up with obvious greed when he saw the Ghost King flowers blooming abundantly on the blood-soaked ground. However, when he caught sight of Zane standing there, the smile on his face slowly disappeared, replaced by a look of annoyance. You! Yes, you there. Stop what you're doing this instant. What do you think you're doing here? The young man's eyes flashed with growing annoyance as he stepped closer, his posture becoming more threatening with each step. I've had my eyes set on these Ghost King flowers for quite some time. Now get the hell out of here before I make you regret it. However, Zane completely ignored the young man's threats and quietly continued collecting the precious flowers, unfazed by the newcomer's aggressive demeanor. Seeing this blatant disregard for his authority, the young man bristled visibly and immediately produced an ornate token, brandishing it like a weapon. Listen well, fool. My name is Trent, and I hail from the prestigious White Wolf Academy of the Five Spirit Sect. If you don't want to grievously offend the sect and face dire consequences, then get out of my sight this very instant. Zane paused momentarily, stopped what he was doing, and slowly raised his head to examine the man more closely, his expression unreadable. Trent was visibly delighted, erroneously thinking that Zane had been frightened out of his wits the moment he heard the illustrious name of the Five Spirits sect. His arrogance grew exponentially with this misguided assumption. Ha! You must be utterly terrified now, aren't you, you pitiful fool? Now that you know who you're dealing with, hand over all the Ghost King flowers in your storage ring. But of course, being the generous person that I am, I won't let you do it for free. I'll graciously take all your flowers for the generous price of one crystal. You can thank me for my kindness later. Without even waiting for Zane's response to this outrageous demands, Trent boldly walked over and was about to forcefully grab the storage ring from Zane's hand. However, Zane's brow furrowed in clear displeasure, and without hesitation, he threw a lightning-fast punch directly at Trent's unsuspecting face. In an instant, the overconfident Trent was sent flying through the air, traveling several meters before crashing unceremoniously to the ground. The arrogant man's two front teeth popped out of his mouth from the force of the blow, and blood flowed copiously from his injured face. You son of a bitch! How dare you punch me? You must have an insatiable death wish. Trent covered his mouth with both hands, his expression a mixture of pain, shock, and unbridled anger. He roared in rage and, despite his injuries, attacked Zane with reckless abandon. With a casual yet powerful sweep of his palm, Zane swiftly unleashed a bolt of dazzling, intense light aimed directly at the unsuspecting Trent. Without hesitation, Zane then threw a lightning-fast, devastating punch. A crisp, unmistakable sound of fracturing bone echoed through the area. Trent's arm broke instantly with a sickening snap, and he hastily retreated with a pained, agonizing scream. Both his arms now trembled uncontrollably, bleeding profusely from the devastating impact. Ah! You broke my arm, you bastard! Listen carefully, for I won't repeat myself. I'm here on my esteemed master's direct orders. By hurting me, you're openly opposing the mighty Five Spirit sect. You're as good as dead. You hear me? He gnashed his teeth furiously as he roared, his face contorted with rage and disbelief. Oh? A mission, you say? Surely there must be more of you involved. Where are your seniors? Why don't you tell them to come and face me as well? But before you scurry away like the coward you are, hand over that storage ring in your trembling hand. As Zane spoke these words, his eyes gleamed with a cold, calculating light of pure, 
unbridled greed. Without warning, he swiftly executed the second movement of the formidable three-star step. He reappeared before his stunned opponent like a menacing ghost, unleashing a tremendous, overwhelming force. In an instant, Zane's iron grip clamped down on Trent's arm, immobilizing him completely with his superior strength. What? What in the world do you think you're doing? Unhand me this instant! Trent, utterly shocked and visibly frightened, could only watch helplessly as Zane swiftly and skillfully removed his prized storage ring before unceremoniously tossing him aside like a ragdoll. Peering intently into the newly acquired storage ring, Zane was delighted to discover at least a full pound of the coveted Ghost King flower nestled safely inside. What am I doing, you ask? I'm robbing you, of course. Isn't it painfully obvious by now? Or perhaps I haven't made myself clear enough for your limited understanding? You see? If you believe you have the right to rob me, then logically, I must have the same right to rob you in return. Wouldn't you agree? It's only fair, after all. Zane spoke these words with a bland, almost bored smile playing across his features. After carefully pocketing the valuable Ghost King flower and approximately 500 glittering crystals, he nonchalantly tossed the now empty storage ring back to the stunned Trent. Now then, I believe it's high time for you to take your leave. Run along now, and do make it quick. I have other matters to attend to. The very concept of getting robbed seemed foreign to Trent. He had only ever been the one doing the robbing. Never in his life had anyone dared to rob him so brazenly. You absolute madman! I swear on my life, I'll make you pay dearly for this insult! Trent's face paled visibly with uncontrollable fury. Enduring the searing pain coursing through his injured arm, he summoned forth a long, menacing cold sword with a flash of light. The deadly sword flashed brilliantly in the dim light, its edge gleaming with deadly intent. In response, the legendary dragon blood sword materialized instantly in Zane's steady hand, ready for battle. Their blades met with a thunderous clash, sparks flying wildly in every direction. Zane wielded his dragon blood sword with unmatched skill, creating a dizzying array of a dozen shadowy afterimages that surrounded his opponent. Overwhelmed by the onslaught, Trent found himself retreating step by desperate step, deep red stains blossoming across his chest as blood flowed freely from numerous wounds. That, that's the dragon blood sword, isn't it? The legendary weapon from the Hall of the Holy Sword. How in the world did it end up in your unworthy hands? His face had long since drained of all color, a mixture of fury and disbelief evident in his wide eyes. Why do I possess the dragon blood sword? Hmm. Well, allow me to simplify it for your clearly befuddled mind. The answer is quite simple, really. It's because I am a proud member of the Hall of the Holy Sword. What? You can't possibly mean you're actually a member of the illustrious Hall of the Holy Sword? Upon hearing the renowned Hall's name, Trent's face cycled rapidly through a myriad of emotions, with abject terror becoming increasingly evident with each passing second. After all, who in the entire Five Spirit sect didn't know and fear the formidable reputation of the Hall of the Holy Sword? He's truly from the Hall of the Holy Sword. No wonder my once prided swordsmanship seems like child's play compared to his mastery. I'm completely outmatched. Trent's mind raced frantically, a thousand thoughts battling for dominance. Pointing an accusing finger at Zane, he managed to shout coldly, trying to mask his growing fear. Don't you dare move a muscle! I'm going to call for immediate backup! I challenge you to stay right where you are if you have any honor! Without waiting for a response, he then turned tail and fled hurriedly in the direction from whence he came. Seeing this pitiful display, Zane simply smiled not bothering to pursue his retreating foe. Well, well. He's inadvertently saved me quite a bit of effort by willingly giving me such valuable items. Stay put, you say? Challenge accepted, my foolish friend. I do hope he returns quickly, though. I'm not known for my patience. And I certainly won't wait around forever.
Meanwhile, Trent navigated swiftly through the complex, treacherous jungle, finally reaching the center of the imposing Ghost King Mountain. There, four other disciples approximately his age waited vigilantly, all of them impressively at the fourth stage of the foundation level. A wretched-looking bald man sat in deep meditation atop a massive rock, surrounded by the four attentive disciples. His expression was shifty and uncertain, but his body visibly brimmed with potent vital energy, almost surging out in visible waves. Had Zane been present, he would have instantly recognized this individual as none other than Leslie Mendoza of the White Wolf Academy. As it turned out, Leslie had been ordered by his master to lead several promising disciples on an important mission. While passing through the treacherous Ghost King Mountain, they had taken the opportunity to gather the rare and valuable Ghost King flowers. However, Trent had unexpectedly been robbed by the formidable Zane en route. Trent, what took you so long to return? Were you at least successful in collecting enough Ghost King flowers for our mission? Trent's face contorted with displeasure as he stammered his response. The flowers, they're gone. What the hell do you mean by that? Leslie's brow furrowed as he questioned. Trent hastily recounted the entire incident to Leslie and the four other disciples. At the mention of the dragon blood sword, Leslie instantly recognized it was Zane. Their animosity had begun at the auction house on Trade Street. That son of a bitch, Zane! I never imagined he'd have the audacity to challenge me. It seems the Azure Dragon Academy's disciples have forgotten their place. All of you, go teach Zane a lesson. He's merely at the fourth stage of foundation level. Your combined strength should suffice to subdue him. Bring him to me. The five immediately agreed, led by Trent. They rushed aggressively towards Zane's location. Leslie remained behind, his eyes gleaming with a chilling light. Among the five spirit sects, four great cultivating academies, the Azure Dragon Academy had ranked last for years. This fostered a belief that it was inferior to the others. Both the White Wolf and Fire Scorpion Academies regarded the Azure Dragon Academy with contempt. Meanwhile, Zane sat patiently on a rock, true to his word, awaiting their arrival. Suddenly, chaos erupted. Five figures surrounded and charged at him. Saber light, spear shadows, sword energy, palm winds, and fist force engulfed him instantly. So they finally arrived, huh? Zane laughed coldly. His eyes narrowed as he executed the second movement of the three-star step. Numerous afterimages appeared. While evading their attacks, he gripped the dragon blood sword, unleashing a burst of sharp sword radiance. It instantly pierced his attacker's defenses. Saber light and sword shadows collided, sparks flying everywhere. To an observer, it seemed Zane was outnumbered. But in reality, his opponent struggled more. Zane's movements appeared ordinary, yet were precisely calculated. Each sword strike was purposeful, always countering their attacks. After a fierce exchange, all five opponents had sustained varying injuries, yet Zane moved with ease and nonchalance. How... how can he be this powerful? The lead attacker was speechless. The others exchanged dismayed looks. In less than 10 minutes, they had shifted from aggression to complete defeat. We've fought enough. Since we're from the same sect, I won't kill you. Surrender your storage rings and leave. Zane spoke softly, but one of the women in the group gritted her teeth. She raised her thin sword and shouted angrily at Zane. How dare you be so arrogant, you Azure Dragon Academy disciple? Opposing the disciples, White Wolf Academy is courting death. Her sword pierced the air, but her technique was flawed. Senior Willa, don't! Trent tried to stop her, but it was too late. Zane's eyes narrowed. The dragon blood sword sliced through the air, instantly shattering her thin sword. It even grazed the woman's arm. Blood gushed from the wound. It seems I must teach you all a lesson today or you'll continue to underestimate the Azure Dragon Academy. Zane's eyes flashed with icy, menacing light. 
he suddenly and swiftly brandished the formidable dragon blood sword in his hand. An overwhelmingly powerful and razor-sharp blade of energy instantly shot forth. These five people, despite hailing from the prestigious Five Spirit sect, had never truly experienced the harsh realities of the outside world. This particular scenario had never occurred in any of their carefully controlled sect competitions before. Immediately, their psychological defenses crumbled like sandcastles, and an uncontrollable tremor ran through their bodies. They didn't even possess the slightest courage to resist Zane's overwhelming presence. Hand over all your storage rings this instant, and I might consider letting her go. Otherwise, don't blame me for being utterly ruthless. With a strange, unsettling laugh, Zane deliberately pointed his gleaming dragon blood sword at the frightened crowd and threatened them. The five opponents had no choice but to face Zane and become uncharacteristically humble. Although their cultivation levels were similar, their battle tactics and raw courage were far inferior to Zane's. Mark my words, Zane. The White Wolf Academy will remember this grave insult. We will settle this score sooner or later. You can count on it. The injured woman, Willa, grimaced visibly as she uttered those words through gritted teeth. She shouted coldly and reluctantly threw out her precious storage ring. The others, seeing no alternative, quickly followed suit. Yeah, sure. Now get lost, all of you, and keep this firmly in your minds. The person who utterly defeated and robbed you today is Zane Martell. Not everyone in the Azure Dragon Academy is a weak, sickly kitten whom you can casually walk all over and treat with undeserved contempt. Witnessing this humiliating defeat, the five disciples of the White Wolf Academy flounced away in a mixture of anger, shame, and fear. After they left, Zane wasted no time. He simply called forth his faithful Elemental Panther and swiftly mounted it setting off in the direction of Kintare County without a backward glance. He had been away from Kintare County for what felt like an eternity, since his beloved father, Ezekiel Martell, had mysteriously disappeared, and he had been so cruelly betrayed. Zane had experienced far too many life-altering events. Right now, the only person truly worthy of being missed in all of Kintare County was the kind-hearted Amara. Zane's heart instantly warmed when he fondly recalled how she had always looked out for him. Even in his darkest hours, he could not help but urgently command the powerful panther beneath him to increase its already impressive speed. After having devoured the formidable golden ray leopard within the mystical dragon temple during their last encounter, the pitch black elemental panther's speed had soared to an entirely new, awe-inspiring level. At that very moment, it transformed into a gust of howling wind and crackling lightning, seamlessly merging into the oppressive darkness of Ghost King Mountain before disappearing in the blink of an eye. However, back in the very center of the ominous Ghost King Mountain, the five thoroughly defeated disciples who had just returned hung their heads in shame. They now had to face Leslie, who was positively incandescent with unbridled anger. The disgraced disciples were far too timid to even dare look up and meet his furious gaze. Oof, all of you are utterly useless. How is it possible that the five of you combined couldn't even manage to defeat Zane? He's nothing but a lowly personal disciple, as if there could possibly be anyone more powerful than the mighty Hugh in that second-rate Azure Dragon Academy. Lead the way immediately. I'll teach Zane a lesson myself. He must still be somewhere in the mountain. Leslie's eyes were as cold as ice, and there was an unmistakable hint of murderous killing, intent gleaming within them. Upon hearing their master's resolute words, the morale of the defeated crowd immediately rose, and they eagerly began to clear the way ahead, hoping for a chance at redemption. Two long, unavailable
Extended absence, passing the familiar street, a right turn would lead directly to the imposing Martell Mansion, his birthplace, and the site of bitter betrayal. However, Zane deliberately chose to turn left instead, purposefully heading towards the modest treasure emporium where Amara worked and lived. Without true bonds of friendship and loyalty, the once prestigious Martell family now meant absolutely nothing to him. He resolutely opted not to return to that place of painful memories. Halting at the Treasure Emporium's unassuming entrance, he gazed intently at the unchanged door, a flood of bittersweet memories washing over him. When I first encountered Amara and Otto here, I was at my absolute lowest point. Who would have thought so much could dramatically change in the span of just half a year? <sighs> he sighed deeply. A mix of emotions crossing his face before instructing the loyal panther to vigilantly guard the entrance as he cautiously entered the building. The interior of the Emporium was starkly different now. Once bustling with activity and filled to the brim with Kintair County's finest and most exotic goods, it now stood eerily quiet and disconcertingly empty. To Zane's growing concern, Amara and Otto were nowhere to be seen in the usually welcoming space. Amara, come quickly and see who has returned. Only silence answered his urgent call. As he cautiously ascended to the second floor, a door suddenly creaked open, breaking the oppressive quiet. A middle-aged man emerged from the shadows, his eyes widening in stunned disbelief at the sight of Zane. It was none other than Otto. Zane? Is it really you? Otto stood rooted to the spot, clearly not expecting Zane's sudden appearance after so long. Otto, it's been far too long, my friend. Where is Amara? Is she not here? Zane's initial smile of greeting quickly faded as he took in Otto's dire condition. Missing an arm, deathly pale, and with a severely weakened aura, Otto was clearly still recovering from grievous injuries. Otto, what in the world has happened to you? Who did this? Without warning, Otto suddenly collapsed to his knees. His head bowed low in unmistakable shame and regret. I've failed you terribly, Zane. I couldn't protect her. Shocked and increasingly confused, Zane felt his heart racing as he hurriedly moved to help the injured Otto back to his feet. What's going on, Otto? Please tell me everything. Did something happen to Amara? Where is she? It's all my fault, Zane. Amara, she was forcibly abducted half a month ago by that despicable Lyle Martell and his vicious associates. The devastating news struck Zane like a bolt of lightning, momentarily emptying his mind of all thought as he struggled to process the information. In an instant, a suffocating wave of murderous killing intent emanated from Zane's trembling body, accompanied by fluctuating terrible peals of thunder that seemed to shake the very foundations of the building. His eyes filled with blood, unbridled rage threatening to consume him entirely. He visibly struggled to maintain even a semblance of composure. Explain everything to me right now, Otto. Leave nothing out. After you left, that snake Lyle quickly maneuvered to become the new family head. Then he shamelessly allied himself with the notorious Broken Fang Gang. The Broken Fang Gang? Those ruthless bandits? Zane's brow furrowed deeply as he recalled what he knew of the Broken Fang Gang. They were a formidable and feared bandit group, firmly entrenched in several nearby counties. Certainly not an organization to be trifled with lightly. Persistent rumors claim their mysterious leader was a fearsome six-stage foundation-level practitioner, widely known for his insatiable greed and the path of utter destruction he invariably left in his ruthless wake. With the gang's considerable backing, the Martells swiftly annexed a significant portion of Kintair County's power structure, becoming the undisputed dominant family almost overnight. In exchange for this support, Lyle brazenly gave them control of a lucrative mine in the western part of the city. 
Any young Martel that happens to catch his predatory eye, he takes without hesitation or remorse. Half a month ago, Lyle had his thugs forcibly kidnap poor Amara. I desperately tried to rescue her with the help of some trusted friends. He gestured helplessly towards his missing arm, his voice quivering with a mixture of pain, anger, and deep shame. We failed miserably in our rescue attempt, very nearly losing our lives in the process. This grievous injury is the result of my failure to protect Amara. I'm so sorry, Zane.